Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on this episode of Dynamo BIM. Today, we're going to be getting back to basics on some Revit view setup. We're gonna talk through creating some match lines, setting some view references, and ultimately set up some scope boxes. And of course, the most efficient way we can. For more resources on the Dynamo scripts that we're gonna go over today, please check out below for the links on those videos. You can see I'm in the Revit Advanced Sample project here, and I went ahead and created a few additional view types. So I have a finished plan, furniture plan, and I went ahead and renamed my floor plans to overall plan. To do this, I went ahead and went to floor plans under plan views in the view tab. I went to edit type and I duplicated the floor plan type just call this enlarged plans. The beautiful thing about doing this in terms of creating its own type is that you can actually set a view template so that any new view that is set up with this type automatically gets that view template. Now that we've created that type, we can come in and we can create levels one through three. Hit OK. And once again, we can see that now we have a new view type over here. Talk through renaming these views here in a minute. Now with our match line, essentially we are going to assume that we can't fit this whole plan onto the sheet at this scale. So we're going to come to the view tab once again and draw in a match line. And this will indicate where the view is split. So we get into sketch mode in Revit and draw the line that we want to indicate for our match line. Notice also that we have a top and bottom constraint. So maybe you have a podium that might have a different extents or match line. You can actually set this to your building limitations or your building constraints. You don't need to do that. We're going to have the same for our entire building. So there's our match line. Now if we go to another view, like our finish plan, you can see that that match line is visible. It is actually a three-dimensional line, which once again has a height. So if we go up to level two, we can also see that match line. Once we have our match line, then we can go ahead and draw in our scope boxes. So coming back to our main entry level view, we can come to the view tab and draw in our first scope box, kind of overlapping the match line there, and then our second scope box. And we're going to go back and we're going to rename these zone A and zone B. Now that we have our scope boxes, we can right click on the view. We can duplicate as a dependent. We want two dependent views and essentially we now have a parent and children relationship. Whatever I do to the parent is going to affect the children. If I change the scale, if I add annotations, etc. It's going to, to adjust within the other two uh, views or however many dependents you've created. So I'm going to place a view reference. Notice that it automatically understands the related views, the parents and the children. So we can automatically start to depict to pick out those dependents. So dependent one will be our zone A, hit escape and draw another one of those with our dependent two, which will be our zone B. Now, one thing to note is that the view doesn't reference itself, right? But once again, if we come either to either one of these children, we can see the view reference that is not pointing to itself, right? The opposite zone, if you will. Now that we have those, we can now right click on the parent view and we can apply dependent views. 
And essentially what this is going to do is it's not only going to copy this dependent view setup to the other views that we specify, it's also going to copy the view reference with the view reference attached to the dependents that are new, related to the parents that those live under. So if I click on apply dependent views, you'll see it shows me all of the views with the same scale. Now, most likely, these overall plans will probably be at a different scale than our enlarged or other plans, right? Maybe even our enlarged will be different. But for the sake of you know, discussion here, we're going to make our overall plans a different scale. And when I come back to my uh, apply dependent views feature, you'll see that the overall plans are no longer an option in here because they are not the same scale. So I can come in, I can pick all of the floor plans that I would like to add this dependent view scenario to. And when I do that, once again, not only does it apply the dependent views, it also copies the view references and updates the view references to point at the related views. The first script we are going to run is to find and replace the value within our view name. So in this case, we want to replace dependent one with zone A and dependent two with zone B. And as you can see, this script is set up for me. So this allows me to specify which parameter I want to update, in this case, view name, what value I'd like to find, and what value I'd like to replace that value with. So when I run this, you can see all of those views update. I can run this again for my dependent two with zone B, of course. And another nine views are updated. And while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and replace one with enlarged plan. And there we go. All of our views have been renamed. So if we come back, now we can say any view with the view name that includes zone A, associate the zone A scope box. So if we come back, we can go to the view scope box setup and we want to look at the views with once again, zone A in the name and we are going to set the zone A scope box run this and we should see all of our zone a views within our output update to the zone a scope box and we'll go ahead and do this for our zone b as well run this and then we can come back in and look at these views make sure they've updated and that is Revit View Setup. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Dana Mobim. Hope to see you next time.